All right, guys, Big Rich here with Ohio Fish Rescue, and this is an exciting day. We don't get very many unboxing videos, but today's an unboxing video of some awesome, awesome things. Stick with us and look and see what we get. This is something that was very special, and me and Josh decided to buy. We don't normally buy fish, but this is part of Christmas things, and we found things that I want, things that he wants, so we fulfilled our wishes, and we put our money together and bought it. So this is something, you know, basically for our personal uh, stock, but we don't do that very often. So this is exciting. It's so exciting. I can't wait to open this up and show you guys. Stick with us. All right, so you know you have your favorite host here. Sorry, Dad. I'll grab the rim of the net and go. <laughs> I got the air on the neck. These chicken breasts won't help. Are you done yet? <laughs> Normally, I don't video this kind of stuff, but Reaper went, you know, dilly dallying around through my extra stuff, and he, this is what he picked out. Now, he didn't say, Hey, Rich, do I mind or can I? He just said, Hey, you got some extra stuff. I'm going to look through it. I'm like, Sure, go ahead, Reap. <laughs> so he got himself a, what's this? A little filter. AC30, mm -hmm. a baby holder, uh, air, air thing, um, all kinds of uh, food. And then some air valves and stuff like that. And I never put that on video. So I'm going to now because of all the bad comments I got last video. <laughs> Reaper gets set up. Pretty much everything Reaper has come from me. So, you know, he's uh, he's redoing his 125 now and we're going to set that up. Ooh, I'm not going to. I should cut that out, huh? Yeah, you should. <laughs> We're not going to let the cat out of the bag, guys. Just don't tell no one, okay? You heard that. <laughs> the, the surprise is coming in. <laughs> okay, guys. We're here to do this unboxing now. I cut the box open. And let me see. Use this plastic. The edge. There we go. Okay. Now... I'm I'm pretty excited here. I like this. This is this is something I don't get to do normally. There is an outer bag, okay. Ooh. Oh, the one don't look like he's doing good. Chinese big headed carp. Looks like there's four of them. So we're gonna have to get them out of the water soon. What do we got here? What is this? I don't know what these are. I can't tell. There's two of them in there. This is an albino. Ooh, are they albino prune sharks? That's what they look like. Josh didn't tell me everything we ordered. I just know what I wanted. And then this is something I've been waiting for. And Rod at Predatory Fins finally got him in. And that's a 14-inch ABBA knife. So he's past the, the young stage, and we can, we can feed him well. And there's something else here. Oh, more high fin banded sharks. Awesome, I love them. What is this guy? This is an Abba knife. No, I didn't order this. Let me call Josh real quick and see what's going on with that. Hang on a second. Okay, this Abba knife was a surprise. Josh said that our view, one of our viewers, Anthony, wanted to buy this because he felt so bad that our last one died and he wanted to do something nice for me. I appreciate that, Anthony. You are amazing. Thank you so much. He is, he is nice. He is beautiful. This is amazing. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you so much. I mean, my goodness. You should call me so I can thank you proper. This is, this is too much. Thank you so much. Aw, we got an ABBA bag. That's awesome. 
I, 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 my viewers are just the best. You guys are awesome. You know, it's... <laughs> I can't get over someone bought me an ABBA. That's, that's amazing. Thank you. Um, I was excited before. Now I got free presents too. And an ABBA. Oh my God. Thank you so much. You guys rock. You rock, Anthony. Thank you. Okay, now, Rod and his crew at Predatory Bins did a fantastic job packaging these, double bagging everything, shipping them with oxygen. They all showed up alive, doing well, so uh, kudos to Predatory Fins. They're awesome. You guys check them out online, Predatory Fins. Uh, get all your, your specialty fish there. Um, also, what I'm gonna show you now is, there's double bags, so I'm gonna take the inside bag out without letting the oxygen out. There's a reason for that. Take the outside bag off and then reseal on the inside bag and letting it acclimate to the same temperature. Uh, I'll explain all that in a minute, but let me grab some hooks. Clamps or hooks, however you want to call them. All right, now I'm gonna take off the outside bag because the inside seal and you know it, it nothing's built up yet problem is as soon as you open this air this to the oxygen it'll turn into a just complete ammonia inside so we don't want to open that up yet so we're going to take the outside bag off the inside bag and keep it sealed kind of hard to do with one hand but there we go now the bag can acclimate to the water temperature much easier now as you can see these bags are like crimped with a special crimping so I'm just going to separate the bag and rip off the outside bag And that's basically all we need. Now that the water the fish are in are gonna to touch the water inside. Okay, now I'm going to leave them sit in there for 20 minutes or so and, uh, you know, let them get acclimated to the same temperature. Okay, what I'm not going to do is put this water in there because as soon as I open them bags and it gets, touches air, it'll get converted into just a bunch of ammonia. So I'm going to pour these bags through a net in a bucket to catch the fish and then put the fish directly in the water. Um, that's what we've worked, done for ages and this what we found to be best. Okay, time's up, and we're going to go ahead and start opening the bags. And, uh, need some stool to sit on.
Now, these are really special. These are albino Haroon sharks. Sharks always love these, they're great in ponds too. Yes, they can last outside the pond. That's what they are. Goliath African tiger fish. Maybe cichlid out there because the abba will eat him. Go ahead and put him back over here. Okay, and there you have it. All the fish are in now. Let me take the phone out of here. Give me a little close-up of them. Okay. Let me zoom in a little more. Okay. There's the albino prune sharks, the high fin sharks, banded sharks. Oh, one of the big head carp. They're not doing so well. Come on, buddy. You got to revive. Remember I said in the bag he wasn't doing well. That's the way he was acting in the bag. But hopefully the fresh, clean water helps him survive, helps him revive. And then we have, oh, there's the elephant nose. There's the other albino prune shark. There's one of the big-headed dorados. Or, I'm sorry, big-headed uh, carp. Come on, buddy. Let me get a net and get some of that dirt out of the bottom. 
when I filled this up with water, the hose had some dirt in it. That's all crud that was on the bottom of the tank. All right. So they're all doing good. Let's hope that uh, big-headed Chinese cart does better, clears up. And then the Ab and I. Look at you go, buddy. Now you got some dirt in there, too. This water is crystal clear. It just had some settlement on the bottom. So I just did a fresh water change and fresh water for both of these tanks. But that was last night, and I decored it so it was fresh, fresh water. Not our used good water, but fresh water out of the, out of the faucet. So I decored it and had it set overnight. It got to room temperature, and but, you know, some of the dirt has settled. These are, are guys I just can't wait to grow out. We have an African arowana again. See, the problem with the last one was he just uh, he stopped eating anything and we, we had a hard time getting him to eat and we even fed him live brine shrimp and he just eventually wasted weight and died so you know he was uh, he would always be in this this tank over here and now looking back remember I kept telling everybody that he always hid right behind this area right in here He'd be right behind there all the time. So you'd, you'd have to go like this to see him or, you know, up here to, to see maybe his tail or something. And that is behavior before he used to be out swimming all the time. That is behavior like he's hiding and, you know, he's, uh, you know, something's going on. He's sick. You know, when you get sick, you want to just lay in bed. And that's all he did was stay behind there. So for a long time, people thought he was already dead and he was just hiding behind there. But we were trying to get him to eat. And, you know, it just wasn't working, so. But now, we got a new one. And uh, what I'm going to do is keep these pretty much by themselves or in with uh, smaller fish until they get bigger and they're healthy and hearty and eating good. And uh, then we'll try them in with other fish. Because I had my last, if you remember, the one that, that, that Tracy killed by accident. <clears throat> there was like a half inch of room right here. And Tracy thought to herself that there wasn't enough water coming in because the water going out would be higher if more water was coming in. So she turned up the water flow. Well, she didn't know, but the top came up and touched the top and that big, you know, 28 inch African arrow I had in here, he was huge, had no way to go up and get air. So basically he suffocated. Um, and I, you know, I couldn't yell at Tracy I was mad. I was upset. I've had him for like four years. He was amazing. People were just amazed by him. Didn't know what he was. He was a great fish. But, you know, Tracy turned up the water flow thinking she's helping. And this is why I, I don't want no one touching none of my settings, even Josh, without consulting me. Talk to me. Hey, Dad, I'm going to turn up the water to the 1,000 gallon. Um, hold up. Why? What's the purpose? Everything's running great the way it is. Well, there's this reason. Okay, that's a good reason, but we have to look out for this and that. You know what I'm saying? So nobody does anything around here without consulting the other people because it keeps it keeps accidents from happening. From what one person thinks and you, you're not uh, thinking of the whole big picture, you don't know that you're making it worse for other fish or vice versa, something like that. So we've learned to, I don't change nothing without Josh. We talk it over. It's a plan, and then we go ahead and do it. Or if we have to, you know, change parameters because we're going to do this, then we got to, you know, make sure that it's going out. We have to watch this. We have to watch that. You know, we we talk it over first and then make the changes now so that, that never happens again. Because, I don't know if you remember, but the, the turtle is what made me see it. When I came out here, the turtle was, was down here and he was his head was out and touching the rock. And I'm like, that's not normal. And I look around and then I see the the um, African arrow was sitting in the back corner on his side up, you know, curved like a C. And then I seen the top of the water. 
I immediately, uh, you know, went in there. I got the net. I got the turtle out and brought him out into air. And uh, I actually think I put him right in the next tank over, which has plenty of air. If you notice, you don't see a water line here, right? But if you open up the glass and look on the sides, there's a water line of about an, at least an inch. I try and keep the water. If the tops are right here, where you at? If the tops are right here, I try and keep the water somewhere right around here so that I don't see the water line. I don't like seeing that. You know, see this tank? No water line. I don't like seeing that. This tank here, no water line. But if you look, this 2200, there's a water line and it's distracting from the beauty of the tank. You always look at that because it's bright, it's white, you know. So in this case, I can take this top off, which I can move right here. <laughs> okay, there, you can see me moving it. I could take it off and cut the wood that's, there's like uh, pieces of wood inside that sit right there. I can cut that back another half inch and bring this down some, or I can take tape and cover over the holes of the overflow. See up there, there's tape there. And it covers the bottom half of the holes and then the top half of the holes is another two inches. I can cover up another half inch is what this is. And then the water line would be like right here above the um, a canopy to where you don't see it. But there's still two inches of, of air before the top. The top's right here. So um, I don't like seeing that. You know, you can see here, no water line. This, I got to fix. I don't like that. Um, and then same thing with the uh, cichlid tank. I've always wanted to make my own wood doors that come down to about here, right? Quarter inch below that line. And they would go straight up to the, the wall on hinges. I can take the door, pull it open, and have a magnet here on the roof, and it would stay open. Just little, you know, quarter-inch Luan doors. They don't have to hold no strength or nothing like that. Um, but you would have to seal them with the two-part epoxy so that the wood don't get affected by the moisture in here and start curving. But then I could come out here, and, and, and the doors would be down, and then I could just lift the door up. It would magnet to the top, and I can get into this area. And the whole top, you wouldn't see none of this light. It would be like this all the way down. And then you'd see just tank. Now see how that looks? That looks a lot better, right? When you start seeing this, now your eyes get averted to the top and you start looking up there. It draws your attention away from the beauty of the tank. So that's what I want to do. And the same thing down here. Quarter inch Luan and then drill a little hole and put magnets in it and then glue that in to where they just go up there and stick. And they're black. And they cover from down there all the way up to about here to where you can see just a little bit of the gravel or even none of the gravel. And then this would look a lot nicer. I just haven't got around to it. That's all little stuff that isn't necessary, doesn't have to be done. Um, let's see if this big headed carp's doing any better. He's still on his side. He looks awful skinny too. Well, we'll check back in five minutes. But we have our African arrow. We have our, our Abba knife, you know, and I'm still sad about the last one. There was no reason for that death. It was like he had a heart attack just from freaking out, I guess. I don't know, from the move. But I've moved Ab as many times before, and they never acted like that. So now we have a new one. Thanks to Anthony. Thank you, Anthony. You are awesome. Anytime you want to come up here or... or or you know call and get a video you let me know just let me know and I'll, I'll do it for you you want to visit and you, you come anytime I'll schedule around it so now we've got these tanks here for grow outs and I'm gonna to have to do water changes on this but now this one uh, my plans today I didn't expect to fish uh, Josh just told me last night but my plans for today was to lower this water level down to about here below that level take that plug out put in an elbow in there, point it up, and then put in a pipe going straight up, and then cut it off right about here so that the water level will overflow the pipe and go down. Then I have to connect the back of the pipe from here all the way over to the filter over there and then goes back into the water. So then I can take a hose and siphon from here to here and then this will be on our system. The bottom one will not. We have no way of getting the water back up without adding pumps and all that kind of stuff and then you've got new things to look out for. What if that 
bucket overflows the pumps in or whatever you know that kind of stuff so we're going to leave the bottom one was going to be for you know uh new fish that come in quarantine and the top one was going to be on our system that's what we were going to do with the ABBA when we upgraded this i pulled him out of his tank we put these tanks here i was going to put him right back in but you know when he convulsed and died like that it was just the craziest thing i mean for the use i know a lot of you seen this but let me tell it real quick for the people that haven't i had this 110 here with the ABBA in it and that tank with the wolfish in it so they were here i needed to put this here so what we did was I drained water out of the Abbott tank and put it in a big tub right here. And then I drained water out of the wolffish and put it in a tub there. Then I reached in, I netted the Abba, brought him out, put him into the, the tub, and then I reached back, I got the wolffish, put him in the tub, and seen that the Abba was dead. Now, Jerry said as soon as I turned my back and went to get the wolffish, that the Abba started convulsing and shaking, and then he just rolled over on his side. So... It was the quickest death from a healthy fish. I mean, he had just ate. Everything was fine. He was, you know, like 26 inches, something like that. He was big. He was healthy. He was thick. He wasn't skinny and, and you know, sickly looking at all. But just from moving him with the net to there to here, he ends up having a, what seems to me is a heart attack and died. And it was, it was one of the worst days of our lives here. It was horrible. So, thank you, Anthony. We got a new one. I'm not going to move him. This is his tank for probably two years. When he gets big enough, then he can go on into the 1,000-gallon or something like that. Uh, we'll, we'll deal with that then, or the 600-gallon, or the 240, because this is a 135. So, he'll have his own tank by, you know, even even like one of these 180s, because we're, we're planning on moving these fish out of here. So, this might be his, his forever home eventually. Who knows? We'll deal with that when the time comes, but you know when they get big like that, you got to have them in by themselves. So we're, that's what we're going to do. All right, now I got to clean this mess up, put this bucket away, put the net away, put the I call it my seat, but the FX5 back, and uh, clean up around here. And uh, I'm not going to waste your guys' time watching that. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed the, today's video and hit that like button, please. And uh, you know, hit that subscription bell. Uh, you know, a lot of people are saying they're not getting notified. Hit it to turn it off and hit it to turn it back on and maybe you'll get notified. When, you know, we put out our videos, but everyone should know that we put out a video every other day and we hold to a strict schedule. It's on every other day at 6.30 in the morning, our time, Eastern. So it's there every morning. We, we haven't missed one in like, I don't know, two years or something. Uh, there was one time where it was late, like 10 o'clock, but other than that, you can pretty much bank on it that we're going to have a video out at 6.30 in the morning every other day. And then every other day, Reaper's video comes out. So you don't really need the subscription bell, but it's nice to be notified. So, all right, guys, you take care. And, you know, thank you to all my loyal family, friends, and, and followers. You guys, well, that's family. So you guys are my family. You guys are in our lives. You're integrated. You know what's going on every day. You see what we go through, uh, so you're all family. So thank you guys for sticking with us and watching and, and helping out and you know watching them ads. I appreciate that. That's that's great. That helps us too. Or leaving it play all night long while you go to bed. That's that's awesome of you guys. I've heard all kinds of different ways that you guys helped us out. So thank you for that. So until next time, stay fishy, my friends. Wait, what is this? A bonus video? I just found out from Josh. He had said Anthony. He didn't tell me. This is Anthony, our, our mod, AZ Fish Room. Guys, go check out his his YouTube channel, AZ Fish Room. Uh, that's that's Brittany's husband, Anthony. He, you guys remember him mostly for doing that awesome Hoover impression. <laughs> they took us out to dinner. Thanks, Anthony. That's awesome of you. I didn't know that was you this whole time. I I you know I I, I always refer to you as AZ and. You know, Josh said Anthony. It didn't. It didn't ring. It didn't click. You know, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, now I'm really going to go. Stay fishy, my friends. <laughs>